three filmmakers with nothing in common. They thought they had it all figured out. They don't just follow the movies, they make them. Alexander Pavlak, Mario Silvas, and Jamal Alexander are the makers on film. Mario still, uh, is he going to be joining us at any point? Uh, yeah, apparently his cat unplugged the internet. That is an incredibly intelligent cat. <laughs> Maybe it's just the worst internet setup ever. I prefer to live a whimsical life and just say it's an incredibly intelligent cat. Well, knowing Mario, it really could go either way. Okay. Mario texted me. Yeah. Now he said, "Give me five, you know, cat unplug the internet," and I said, "Like he knew," and then Mario responds, not having been able to hear our conversation. He responds with, "No, it's the dumb one that likes lights. It just noticed the router has blinking lights, and it constantly is batting it around." Hey. So I, I guess we're going with with my theory of it just being a shitty setup. Yeah, this is this is mostly his fault then. Yes. I'm just uh, I'm gonna go over to TMZ, see if there's anything new going on. Oh god, TMZ. If if you just read the headlines and, and don't actually watch the little videos, it's actually kind of entertaining. I don't even get past that part. I just stare at the pictures of the girls. Well there's that too. That's all they do. That's all I do when I watch them just girls, you know? That song always reminds me of the uh, of the Muppet Show. It does, doesn't it? That's the old place I know from, actually. Yeah. And then they'll they'll play that at uh, at the loft for their first Friday shorts, I think. Are they still doing those? Probably. I have a friend who keeps uh, inviting me to go out there to watch his movies, and I keep telling him that I will, and I never actually do. That's that's not that's that, not nice at all. You should probably uh, make the effort. Either that, or just stop telling him I'm going to go. Oh, you can do that. Yeah. Definitely should should try one of those. Yes. Uh, let's see. Um, birthdays today would be Ed Norton. Christian Slater, Patrick Swayze, Robert Redford, and Andy Schomburg. I do not like the idea that they're, they they mentioned uh, what's his name's birthday when he's dead. And dead. Yeah, well, you know, people can still celebrate your birthday, and they do that with Elvis. <laughs> oh yeah, wow! Well, it's Elvis. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell's teenage daughter reported missing. And then found. Yeah, I read uh, read about it. Oh, yeah, she has... oh, oh, my God. I thought she ate her. Oh. <laughs> that was a little mean. Yeah, it's fucking Rosie O'Donnell. Who cares? See, this is why her daughter ran away in the first place. People making insensitive comments like that. Okay. Did you ever see the Rosie O'Donnell show when she had a TV show that eventually became the Ellen DeGeneres show? Yeah, I remember it. Okay. The only thing she had going on in her life, Rosie O'Donnell, was children to talk about. I fully believe that she adopted children just to have something to talk about on her show. Uh, okay. I'm not saying anything bad about lesbian parents or, or anything like that. I'm saying Rosie O'Donnell specifically had nothing else to talk about, so she adopted some kids. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Hey, what's up? Hey. Thank you for joining us on Makers on Film. I am your resident writer-director, Alexander. And with me, as always, always late, that is, Mario Silvis, the uh, sound guy. Yo. And then, as usual, the actor of the bunch who's typically on time. Not always, but typically. Uh, uh, 
guys, I really hate to say this, but you guys are like, you guys are like fading in and out, which means my internet is actually no, that, that, shitty. No, no, I think that's just Alex because he's fading out really bad on my end too. Oh, is he? Okay. Is it? Because, um... because whenever that happens with you guys on my internet, it's like something is about to happen. Anyway, the, I know that. the other name I was going to say was Jamal before I was rudely interrupted there. So say hello, Jamal. Yo. Uh, first things first, did, did you guys hear that Batman died? Yeah. What? You, you didn't hear that Batman died? Adam West died? No. Oh, no. Uh, not, not, not an actor who played Batman. Oh, Batman. Actually, Lenny Robinson of Maryland or Maine? Maryland, I think. Wasn't, um, he, wasn't he the guy that was in Bat Kid? Yes. Yeah. That was the guy. Um, basically what it is, he's like a 50-year-old dude. And what he did, he would he owned a Lamborghini, like the Lamborghini. Uh, Marcelo. Yeah, Marcelo. Thank you. That's the Which, one that means bat. Yeah, and uh, like he has a one-to-one replica of the Batman costume, like the nineteen nineties Batman. I don't. I don't really remember. Um, the picture but he has, looks, well, yeah, yeah, nineteen nineties Batman. Yeah, so he has a legit Batman costume, and he'd go around to haunt hospitals and he would um this sick kids and stuff well his lambo just broke down on him one day and he was on the uh the highway on the side and someone sideswiped him and killed him mm-hmm. yeah that oh no sucks. i'm sorry no no no. He, they hit the the batmobile i mean there's no other way of putting it and then apparently it was going so fast because he was uh, under the hood, like, in front of the car. So they hit the Batmobile. The Batmobile hit him. And then I don't know if it killed him immediately, but it did kill him. I, I hope it kind of did kill him immediately. Cause... Yeah, right? I mean, that's that's a shitty way to go in general. But that, yeah. that would be pretty bad for the, the driver of the other vehicle, too, yeah. now having the mystique that you killed Batman. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. You accomplished the... something that you know, the Joker's been trying to do for the last 60 years. Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. You can try to blame it on the Joker, but I don't think that's going to fly with the police. Nah. But yeah, he's uh, passed away this, what, was it two days ago? Something like that. Yeah. Earlier this week, yeah. Yeah. So we should give him a little moment of silence because he did bring a lot of joy to a lot of kids, especially the, the bad kid in that very inspirational and I'm sure quite sappy movie. Yep. So we'll give him. Okay, uh, Jamal, you yes. uh, you were telling me that you went to go see the Fantastic Four movie. Hell no, I did not go to see the movie. I did not pay money to see it, but I did see it. Well, however, extrapolate you... from that what you will, uh, audience. Um, but no, however... I, I I I have seen it, and it, it is. You know, some movies are so bad they're good. Mm-hmm. This movie's just terrible. I mean, it is absolutely horrible. Well, really? I am a, I am a big you know, uh, 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 you know, Fantastic Four uh, fan. I think it's it's a franchise that have done right could be really really good. And 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 for those of you who aren't aware, you've seen two really good Fantastic Four movies in the past. The first one was called Incredibles. The second one was called Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was a, I was a little afraid you were actually going to say the Fantastic Four. <laughs> no, no 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 no. Go to go check out the Rotten Tomatoes. The worst of those two, first two Fantastic Four movies, or the the second two Fantastic Four movies, because there was one in the nineteen nineties by Roger Corman, which was yep. also horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. yeah. The the worst of the second two is still three times better rated on uh, Rotten Tomatoes than this new one. That's how really? bad this new one is. Wow. Because wow. that second it, one was you know horrible. What, you know what the you know what the score is? Eight. Seriously? Jesus Christ! Really? It pulled an eight. On Rotten Tomatoes. Now, this isn't just Wait, isn't because... tied for, like, the number one worst movie out there on Rotten Tomatoes, then? There's a movie that has a zero, so... Yeah. Oh, is there, I, thought, I thought the lowest was, like, a seven or an eight. No, there's a movie out there with a zero. I forget which one it is. Right. Fucking Fantastic Four one. <laughs> <laughs> the Roger Corman one? Yeah. No, no, no. At least, at least the, the second two 
were were acknowledged what they were that they were bad campy movies. But Dude, there was a I little... enjoyed those. Yeah, there's were there was fun to be had with those. Yeah. This movie, this movie actually, there, there's fun to be had with the Fantastic Four in general. They're sort of like the modern family of, of Marvel comics. They're kind they're family comedy. And this movie just strips all of that out of there. There is wow. no high flying sciencey adventures. There's no comedy between the, the the cast members. There's no family vibe to it at all. This movie is absolutely boring and it is soulless at, at points. And the and the third act of it, like the final part, is the single most disappointing thing I've ever seen in a superhero movie. That's wow. Honestly not surprising. I I uh I'm I'm very heartbroken to hear that cuz I was really hoping for big things for this. No, it is. It is Oh my god. I, I I don't know where to start. I mean it is so bad. I mean like there's not a single character you end up rooting for cuz each one gives you a reason not to, to like them anymore. Or they uh, and, or they're getting they so, all... so go ahead. No, like do they just all suck dick that much? Yeah, yeah. If, if there, there are there are moments in there where they give you this like sort of tease that they're going to start really you know, adding character development and they're going to go to their backstories and you're gonna you're gonna get into their psyche, but then they never go back to it. They stop and then they just completely don't address it again. Like well, a big thing is uh, the fact that uh, uh, Sue Storm is now an adopted sibling and so there's the the black parent, the black sibling, and 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 then there's uh, Sue Storm who's portrayed as white from Kosovo of all places. And they have a line in there where it says, uh, where the dad says, it's always been easier on her than uh, it has been on Johnny, referring to the, their family. And they drop that line in there, and you're waiting for something really good, some real good, like, juicy bits of this story to come out, and then they just never go back to it. What? It, they they so, threw it out okay, there for so nothing. Have, have you seen The Room? I have not seen The Room, no. Okay. Uh, with, with what's-his-face? With uh, Tommy Wiseau. Hello, Mario. Yeah, exactly. So it, I would actually highly recommend this movie, Jamal. It's a – no, no, no. See, here's the thing. Is a lot of people make fun of it. Don't get me wrong. I make fun of it too. But it's a movie that shows exactly what not to do. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Yet... Is this the thing they show on Adult Swim all the time? Yes. The... Okay, yeah I've, I've, yeah. I've tried watching it. I can't okay. get through it. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking rough. Yeah. You, you either have to be drunk or high to finish it. However um, – it's a perfect example of how something so bad can be a cult classic. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, people nowadays are trying to, you know, everybody's trying to make the next cult classic. And something like The Room, what, the first time I saw it, I was like, this is gonna, this is gonna make this guy a millionaire, like overnight. You can tell because it was so bad, and because he, it was so heartfelt that he thought it was gonna be a good movie. That it was so bad, and like it, it, it was terrible. You know, there there were plot holes. Literally, at one point in time, they the uh, the mom character, one of the mom characters, is like, "Oh, I've got cancer," and then that's it. Like, they never that's they never all, talk about it again. That was it. That's yeah. all that was mentioned in the movie. The the daughter bitches about her problems more, and it pretty much tells the mom to shut up about her cancer. Yeah, not not even said in so many words. Yeah. No, but that's exactly what it is. Have so you... when I hear something like, like Fantastic Four, where they're like, "Oh, you know, they, you know, they they legitimately tried." No, this is a, a legitimate attempt at a movie, a big blockbuster movie yeah. that just went so terrible. This movie is not going to go down with a cult as a cult classic. It's going to go down in infamy. I mean, this is this is a low point for comic book movies in general. Like you thought, Catwoman with Halle Berry was bad. This, yeah, but at least she was hot. Yeah, at least at least that had that going. At at least it had that same sort of thing the the second two Fantastic Four movies had, where they were at least trying to be fun. Mm -hmm. Th this oh, movie. Oh, by the way, what did you? Go ahead. What did you say it was on Fantastic? Uh, what did you say it was on IMDb? A four? An eight. An eight on Rotten Tomatoes. No, an eight on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, did you see what it was on uh, IMDb though? No. Does that say negative? No, that'd be funny as shit. Oh. Oh, 3.9, um, there it is. It's a 3.9. Oh, my God. Yeah. It, the meta score is a 27. Like, this is out of almost 300 fucking, like, I don't want to say professional critics, because anybody can be a critic nowadays. Yeah. But this is out of 300 critics who do this on a, you know, a regular basis. 
and then 400 people who just do this for fun. Yeah. It's at a fucking 3.9. Like, I, I'm totally in on you. I'm totally in with you on this one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, the second two could at least, you, you know, people can go down as a cult classic. They'll they'll show that on a Saturday night, like at a, at a like people making fun of it on TV type show. Yeah. Like, that could happen. The This Fantastic Four? No. Nobody's going to show this anywhere. This is this is a, uh, there's a silver lining to this in that it is so bad Fox will probably not make another one of these and will end up reverting the rights back to Marvel. That's the silver lining here. Otherwise, this is probably the biggest disappointment in the last five years of movies. It is that bad. So, in a tweet that was deleted, uh, quickly deleted from August uh, six, two thousand fifteen, Josh Josh Trank said a year ago i had a fantastic version of this and it would have received great reviews you'll probably never see it that's reality though after seeing this version the studio mandated heavy reshoots the newer scenes are easy to spot as kate mara had cut her hair and then had to wear a a blonde wig so apparently the version that uh i'm guessing josh is the director Yes, that the director. My answer to the. Yeah, there, there's a version that the director did or the writer did that. Yeah, the writer director that would have been better than what we saw. Yeah, that, Josh that, Trank. He, he did. He's the guy that directed Chronicles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a halfway decent movie. Okay, my my response to the the Josh Trank thing is bullshit. I mean, I saw the parts that were his. I saw the parts of this movie that was his direction. Those suck too. I mean, this is just. I'm sure there's a there's a lot of blame to go around, and everybody has, like, their share of it. Even the actors, because like towards the end, they they know they're on a, like a shitty movie, and they just give up. Oh, well, here, here's and, a and, here's a good sign. Uh, Kate Mara had initially wanted to read Fantastic Four comic books to prepare for her role as Sue Storm, <laughs> but the filmmakers explained to the cast that it was unnecessary, as the film was an original story not based directly on the comics. That, that breaks wow. my heart to hear that because there's a serious actress really trying to do good for the fans and then them telling her not to do it. That just breaks my heart. And she's probably never going to do another one of these again. They just told her – they basically just told her no. Yeah. Well, the the director said he's not going to work on another comic book yeah. movie. But the thing is, though, I – Fucking shocking. Good. I, I, I was – I was thinking that, you know, just a lot of fans are going to boycott this because they want everything that Marvel comic books to revert back to, to Marvel so the Marvel Studios can do it and they can be in the cinematic universe. Which I said until, that last week, yeah. Yeah, up until just recently, that, you know, really wasn't that big of an issue. But, you know, now you hear that, you know, big studios can't even do this and it's just very disappointing. It's like you, you would have hoped at least the movie would have something to offer. It has nothing to offer. It, Again, no. you took you took characters that were supposed to be fun and you just robbed them of that. That's my biggest complaint about this movie is that it's so boring and it's taxing to watch it at points. Like it's it's almost completely dialogue for a long, long, long portion of this film. It is yeah, it's it's and a lot of it just doesn't make sense too. Like some of the like he creates a teleporting device that has like weird like light effects, and he does it at a uh, a, a school science fair, and nobody notices. I'm sorry, nobody noticed what? Like his tell he he brings a teleporter to a science fair, like the high school science fair, and 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 actually uses it there, and it's this big spectacle of a thing, and nobody notices. Wow, that's how that's how bad this movie is. Like little things like that just slip on by. Yeah, like like they should be, you know, hailing him as a genius at an early age. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's that's sad. Well, you know, the director wrote it. Yeah, I see that. Uh, like I said, the parts that you could tell are his are still bad too. Jesus. Well, well, maybe like you <laughs> it said, it it will revert back to to Marvel now, and they'll be able to do with it what they please, and and put them in the cinematic universe right Wait, what production what production company was this one under uh 20th century fox they they, they they own yeah they own the fantastic four and the x-men there they're, there's probably very little chance they'll see the x-men within the next 20 years but they may lose the fantastic four now and we will all gain from that 
Do you guys, anybody here seen uh, Ant Man yet? No. No. I keep meaning to. I always keep forgetting. If you see it, that's the, that, that movie is a comedic, you know, and fun action movie. That's exactly the kind of tone that the Fantastic Four should have, and I can't wait to see it done right. So. But to, to you viewers out there, do not do not bother going to see this movie unless you could do it uh, cheaply or freely. Wink, wink, nod, nod. All right then. Okay, so speaking of bad films, Mario, do you want to explain your choice this week? Oh God. It was it was terrible, wasn't it? Well, well, here's my positive review. It had boobs, at least. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much the only thing going for it. it okay. Had boobs. Okay, so so let me explain why I chose this film. Yes, please. Okay, so I was having a shitty day. I just was. I just lost three gigs back to back to back within about forty eight hours. And I decided I'm going to listen to the comedy station, Pandora. Pat Oswalt came on. He's oh, one of my God. favorite comedians. Yeah. I, I fucking love Pat Oswalt. He always makes me laugh. I, I knew there was no way we were going to get around the Pat Oswalt bit when, uh, when you yeah. mentioned the movie. But go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. So he goes along saying how you know he's written scripts and he's... You know, he's written scripts, and a lot of times they, they don't work out. And if they do, it takes a year, year and a half long process. And, you know, I, at that point in time, I was sympathizing. I'm like, oh, okay, I get what he's going through. And then he started talking about how this movie called Deathbed, The Bed That Eats, was made. And how a crew was put together. Probably a shoddy crew, mind you, after watching this, after watching this movie. But a crew was put together. People were fed. They were shipped out to locations in order to shoot this movie. And that this movie was made. Like, just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This movie was made. So that got me curious. I was like, what is Pat Oswald so up in arms about this movie? So I decided I'm going to make us all watch it and hate our lives. Thanks, buddy. And, of course, anytime. We, we don't hate our lives. We just hate yours. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's all right. I don't like me either, so we all got that going for us. All right. <laughs> so this also got me thinking, why don't we do, like, like, a, like an appliance type of, uh, of movie week? So I, I found Deathbed, which I apologize profusely for. Um, I also found The Fridge. I'm not too sure if you guys know what the fridge is. No, that I've I've actually never heard of that one until you okay. sent it to me. Um, basically, this New York couple lives in a shitty part. Basically, Compton is the easiest way of putting it. Um, they move into this new house, and the entire apartment is bare except this awesome-looking fridge, and they love it. And then all of a sudden, things start going awry, and people die and shit. And apparently, it's the fridge. So, there's that. And then what, what else were you saying, Alex? Uh, rubber. I, I suggested rubber, which is the tire. That That's right. People. And, um, and then to round it out, to make it like a month worth of, of movies, I suggested either Stephen King's The Mangler, which is a, a industrial washing machine that kills people. Oh, or, I did not see that one. Or, uh, or um, Maximum Overdrive, which is basically every machine trying to kill people. Right, which, which are both uh, Stephen King movies. I, I would highly suggest The Mangler to stick with the, uh, with that kind of theme of of inanimate objects killing people. A laundry folding machine is possessed by a demon from hell. Hey, <laughs> hey Jamal, you want to see something funny, or you want to hear something funny? The Mangler uh, also yeah. has a three point nine on IMDb. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, That's right. It's just, the uh, horror uh, mystery in 1995, The Mangler, is apparently on par with Fantastic Four in 2015. And remember that that screenplay was written by Stephen King. 
Yeah. That is, uh, my God, uh, this movie just cannot catch a break. Ugh. That's funny shit. What does it deserve to, but... Okay, so I, I'll I'll have to admit that this is the first movie that we have chosen on the show, I believe, that I have not seen previously. This is the first time I watched this movie was was for this show. Okay, Wait, and now so you saw Dread beforehand? Yeah. Okay. Right. What did you not, Jamal? No, I saw it. I just I didn't think uh, either of you guys had. Oh yeah, no, I saw. I actually saw it in theaters. Uh, oh, that's right. You did mention that. Okay. Yeah, actually, I've seen both in theaters, actually. So, so <laughs> since since the first movie that we reviewed was uh, was Laser Mission, and you guys couldn't even get through Laser Mission, that was a bad film. Good my, lord. My question is, did you guys get all the way through this film? No, not even close. No. <laughs> you guys are fucking pussies. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. No. Let Let me rephrase that. I watched the entire movie, but it took me all day. The movie is only what an hour fifteen or something, if hour that. 15, yeah. Hour seventeen. Okay. I literally had to watch it. I, in I, twenty minute increments. What's that, Jamal? No, I uh, my I, I and to that I respond. I did not watch this movie. There, I'm not gonna lie. There's full chunks of this that I skip right past because it's that hard to get through. <laughs> I'm like I could not I could not sit here through the whole thing. This movie like lasts an hour seventeen. I may have seen like forty five minutes, maybe less of it. <laughs> um, it is that bad. Oh my god, it's so bad. Uh, See, you know what really killed me is that the storyline changed like three different fucking times, and I could not hear what they were saying that's weird because the whole thing was done adr and and for those of you playing along at home adr is additional dialogue recording which means that you go into a studio and re-record your dialogue and try to make it match up to your lips because something on set was screwing up your recording yeah I, deathbed. I, I think this guy either didn't have uh audio crew he thought he could do it like with the camera and found out it was just crap or he just really didn't know what to do with this and, and didn't like the actors read, so brought in new actors to do the voiceover work. Honestly, that wouldn't surprise me if he did something like that. Because some, I was reading through IMDb, and some of it is, you know, actor for the character and then voice for the character. Yeah. So he, he may have brought in different talent to do those reads, but th that was the most painful thing for me was... was the whole sound like the sound of the bed chewing which i don't understand why the bed had chewing noises when it didn't chew it just I don't know. All and, it, yeah. and it sounded like a fucking apple i know it right digested yeah it digested. Guys, it, it hey guys, just guys, what? What, what what the director george barry he's a leo uh, okay Meaning? i just found that on his page like this is the only thing he's done yeah, this is the only thing yeah. he's done. Yeah, no, no, he released it in 2004, and when they asked him about it, he says, I kind of forgot I made this. No, what, what happened was it, it was shot in, in 72. It took him until 77 to complete it. Could not find a distributor for it. Kind of got disillusioned with the whole making of movies thing. Put it in his attic. Gave out um, uh, copies to his friends or, or to the people who worked on it. And then those people started circulating it around. So this movie actually got an underground cult following without the director even knowing it. And at the time, there was no end credits to the uh, to the movie. So, and, and maybe that's partly why it got redubbed. Maybe somewhere along the way, somebody just redubbed a better audio to it. But it's it. They were trying to look for the the makers of this film because they wanted to put it on DVD. And he finally found out that they were looking for him and found out there was a cult following and came forward. And uh, he, um, and that's when they brought it out onto DVD in 2003. And that's when it officially got released, is in 2003. So, yeah, he, he totally did forget that he made it because he, he didn't do anything with it. He couldn't find a distributor. I don't know how hard Good he tried. Lord. But just, just imagine if this movie actually came out when it was supposed to in this in this early 70s kind of drug induced uh uh lifestyle this this i can't movie, stand those movies anyway 
this movie might have actually been kind of acclaimed for what it did because yeah. it is very bizarre. It's it's kind of overthought and it's 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 kind of imaginative. I mean, it, there are some things about it, and and like I said, all the sound is is really crap and it really bothers me. Like the chewing, the a lot of the voiceover work that could be done through dialogue. Um, the dialogue itself, everything being being done over, just it's so bothersome. But outside of that, the whole idea of the movie is actually kind of intriguing to me. And and through some research, I found out that the guy in the painting, the the artist trapped inside his own painting, yeah, is supposed to be uh, Arbery Beardsley the 19th century illustrator who worked mostly with like scenes of demonic possession and, and pagan rituals. Huh. Hmm. He's just known as the artist in the credits, but on the back of the DVD, they actually named the artist. Crazy. So wait, so, so did you, do you actually have a hard copy of this? No, no, I, uh, I looked it up on the internet. I, I did oh, okay, research okay. on this movie to, to find it out. Gotcha. Also, um, the the priest who gets eaten by the bed, which it's so random that there's just a priest who gets eaten by the that bed. Was, that was there's absolutely funny. no explanation for that whatsoever. No, they just go through all oh, the the bed is eating people through time, and then there's just this priest reading the Bible. Then everybody else is kind of a degenerate, which you can kind of see why they would be eaten by the bed. And then there's the priest. So it's yeah. just. But the 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 guy who played the priest was the guy who actually created. The deathbed. He was the uh, the the contractor, the 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 construction guy on set. The construction dude. And he actually, huh. and he actually created the uh, the deathbed. His name is Jack something. Jack Brandis. And and he's worked on other movies. He's mostly like gaffer and and, and camera and stuff like that. But a little tidbit of information. He was a wanted man in Nigeria for air piracy what wow yes he 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 operated out of some island right out of right off of uh off of nigeria and him and and a group of humanitarians ran air blockades into nigeria to take food to starving children and then transport those starving children out to get them medical care and he was actually he was never captured, but he was tried basically in effigy for his crimes in Nigeria. No fucking way. Yeah. And then he went on to create Deathbed. Well, he he did Deathbed first. He's done some other movies. Oh, oh he did Deathbed first. Oh, yeah. okay. But the Patton Oswalt bit is kind of about the guy who actually worked on set creating the Deathbed. If if you remember the the bit. Yeah. Actually, it's about the the guy's son who, you know, is all like, oh, my father was never there for me kind of a thing. Yeah. It's it's a hilarious bit, but it's it's obviously not true because this guy did way more stuff. That's, I didn't even realize that. I know, right? That's fucking funny. Huh. I mean, it's still a shitty movie, don't get me wrong. It is god-awful. They're, they're, they're... See that's the thing though the 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 concept for the story could have worked had they did it a little differently. Yes. Like like the idea of this bed and and, and I kind of like 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 the 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 backstory for the bed a demon falls in love with a woman fucks her to death on the bed cries tears of blood and then somehow that creates a soul and the de- and the bed becomes alive. Yeah. And then the one woman reminds him of basically his mother. And I think the bed even says that, or the artist says to the bed, because he's taunting the bed, that you can't destroy her because, you know. Yeah, it's she, like the she, eyes. They look exactly like your mother or something like that. And then the, the fact that the bed had dreams and its dreams were that it thought it didn't do enough with its life, I thought was kind of brilliant. And the fact that the bed fucked with other people's dreams, I thought was a good concept. They just, they needed to flush that out more. So there's like these things that just like almost. Yeah. Like, like could have been good if it had, they just ran with it a little more, had, had they just narrowed down what they wanted to do with the movie. But it seemed like they just, they had too many ideas and, and did too much with it. 
and yeah. the acting was bad. And it, yeah, well, that's I mean, so bad. The fucking the first the first scene itself, it was just like you've got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, the the, the black and the chewing, the the chewing over just nothing. That I yeah. thought. I thought I'd gotten like either a bad copy or I thought that there was something wrong with the player. I, I thought I, the same thing too. I freaked out a little bit. I'm like, is this the right movie? You know, maybe I'm watching the wrong thing. So I had to like, like find another one. It started again. It started the same way. And I'm like, okay, I guess this is what I'm watching. I, I hope, yeah. you no, know, there's, there's something happens on screen. And, and that's like, like the first minute and a half. That That's a large chunk of, 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 of real estate to put at the beginning mm-hmm. of the film to draw people in that you just leave black and have this annoying chewing noise. And it was, it, it really sounded like someone chewing an apple. Like, yeah. That was it. That's exactly what I thought too. And, yeah. And, and when I hear that now, I think of the, the guy who does cinema sins and, and his theory about apples, which is always the director said, chew an apple or eat an apple. This will make you look like a bigger asshole. So I'm sitting I didn't here, hear that one. Yeah, so so he, he does that with a bunch of different ones. So so I'm, I'm I'm sitting there and I'm listening to that. I'm like, oh my god, make the bed sound like he's chewing an apple. Make him seem like a bigger asshole. That's funny. Oh, and it's true. Mm-hmm. God damn. Anyway, hey, by the way, uh, Zorro is to get a post post apocalyptic reboot. Seriously. Sorry, it, it just popped up. Yeah, it just popped yeah, up right he, now as I'm reading through it. Who's playing Zorro? Uh, please, no, let no, it's a, yeah, please let it be Johnny Depp. It's a comic book. Oh, it's a, it's a comic book? Or is it a movie? Yeah. It's a comic book. Okay. I don't know. I haven't really kept up with comic books. The last comic book I heard about was that they were doing a sequel to Fight Club and I haven't uh, been able to get that yet. Oh, they don't—they don't have anybody yet. It, it's just saying it's in the works right now for 2016. Is—is is it going to be a movie though? Yeah. Oh my god. Is it? Yes. Hang on. So is it going to be like an alternate timeline because Zorro takes place in like the the 1800s? Yeah. I—I I don't know. Zoro Reborn has been reborn. That's what it's called. So uh, what they're calling it. Did, did you see the last Zoro movie with Antonio Banderas? Yes. Did, did Did you notice all the correlations between that movie and Fight Club? I have not no. seen that movie, but I'm intrigued by now by that. Well, you've seen Fight Club, right? Yeah, I just sent you guys the link real quick. Oh yes, you did. You've seen Fight Club, right, Jamal? Yeah. 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 Okay, so so you know how they were uh, making soap uh, and using that as as their basis for explosives to blow up a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the bad guys in in Zorro movie were doing. They they were a secret organization that was making soap, turning it that's into explosives. Fucking right. To to blow up, uh, uh, I think they're supposed to be blowing up like uh, like uh, like the government or something. Yeah. So it was like Fight Club meets V for Vendetta. It is becoming a film. This is so terrible. This is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Why is it horrible? Because it's fucking Zorro! And? I thought, I, if, if anything, I want to reboot. It's coming from the I man want who just I want to reboot the... <laughs> and this, is, this is exactly the kind of crap thinking that created that movie. If anything, they should reboot it and actually... He started over. Like the first Zorro with the Antonio Banderas, amazing. The second one, no, no, it's not. It's not even Zorro anymore. He turned a swashbuckling hero into a a a, a coddle, or, or a Molly Coddle dad, a soccer dad. Ugh, just ugh. You know what's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's probably never going to be You know made. that, right? Yeah. No, it won't. Hey. By the way, uh, Zorro, Antonio Banderas, perfect casting, just terrible story. Why Why? Why wasn't he not actual Zorro instead of Zorro Jr.? What the fuck are moths in my room? You guys know who George Hamilton is, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, sounds really familiar. Uh, he was a very tan individual, 
Um, basically, that's what he was known for, for just being really, really tan. But he's, he's been in a bunch of movies. So he played Zorro in a movie called Zorro the Gay Blade, where he was not only gay... Actually, it was a set of twins. It was the real Zorro hurt his leg, so he called in his twin brother. And then who was the twin, gay, yeah. Who, who was gay. Movie. And who wore, like, multi-different colored outfits. Isn't Zorro, like public, like, public domain or something? That's why they're able to make movies like that? Um, could be. Uh, I'm going to go with yes on it, because Zorro's been around forever. Yeah. Like, he predates Batman in all of them, too. Well, yeah, Zorro yeah. is actually the inspiration for Batman, because if you look at it, yeah. it's a rich guy dressed all in black who lives in a cave underneath his, his mansion who fights crime. Oh. Fuck. Actually, hey, if you want to get meta about it, if you want to get meta about it, the, the movie that Bruce Wayne and his parents walk out of to, to, before the, the, his parents are murdered, Zorro. Yeah, my Little Pony. The Mask <laughs> of Zorro. I saw this uh, uh, great um, cartoon panel. Um, it's uh, Batman and Alfred and... and Batman says Alfred that sandwich was horrible. He's like, do you know what happened to the last people who said that to me, or to the last person who said that to me? Batman's like, no, what? And Alfred says, I hired a junkie to kill her and her husband in the alleyway. That is terrible, but <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> I know, right? I just thought that was nice. You'd love to see that in an actual movie or cartoon or comic book. Nice. And then you would see, you know, Alfred get his ass kicked by the Batman, but. Uh, you know what else uh, came out that apparently disappointed greatly? Uh, are you aware of, a, of an anime called Attack on Titan? Yes, I'm aware of that anime. Did the film actually come out already? Yeah, the, the live action's out. Oh, I didn't know that. And but... apparently it's disappointing everybody. Really? Mm hmm. That's too bad. The Japanese are usually really good at turning anime into live action. Like they did, so, uh, they did Death Note, which the the first two movies were really good, but the third one, I guess, just kind of fell apart. And and for one thing, all the characters look like they do in the actual anime. Mm -hmm. Racism. <laughs> no. Uh, uh... Okay, so I got to ask you this. this: this has been bothering me, and I want to know if this is racist or not. There is this restaurant here in town. Okay, start over again because you're breaking up again. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. Um, okay, so I want to know if this is racist. This this is something that's bothered me. I just want somebody else's opinion on this. Right. So there is this restaurant here in Tucson called Kung Fu Noodles. Okay. Now, it, it's one of two things. It's either white people made a, a Asian restaurant and called it Kung Fu Noodles because – this is the only only thing that they think, you know, people associate with with the Asian culture. It's kung fu and noodles, which I think would make it racist. Or the other explanation would be that it's an Asian people who created a, a an Asian restaurant who think the only thing Americans know about Asian culture is that you know kung fu and noodles. So they called it kung fu noodles, which would then make it also racist. This is a new restaurant in town. It's not really new. It's been around for maybe a year or so. I'm, oh, I'm going okay. to go with the second one, and I'm not. I'm going to say that it's not racist, in that it, it's coming from their perspective of us through our perspective of them. So it starts with our racism going infl inflecting uh, infecting them, and then returning it back to us. Like the, all they think about us is uh, this stuff, and it's an effective effective tool. I go to a place called Samurai Sushi all the time, and it's it's it. I don't think Samurai Sushi is a, a, a great name for a place, but it, it, it catches your attention, does it not? Wait, are they still open? Samurai Sushi? Yeah. That, yeah. Place, that place actually exists? Yeah, dude. Oh, my it's God. And the food, the food there is amazing. Go there and have the, the, the katsu done. It's amazing. Yeah. The, the last uh, Asian restaurant I went to was a place called You Like Buffet. Which... Yeah, the, one, the one right here you on River? You Like Buffet. No, it's on Oracle, but... Yeah, it, it's called You Like Buffet, which there is everything wrong with that title uh, or that name for a restaurant. I have, you, you want to hear racist? I have a friend who goes there all the time, and you know how he uh, says the name? Yeah. You like it. <laughs> That's funny. You can't even be angry. That's just funny. Oh, my God. That's racist. 
funny, but racist. So, speaking of book days, why don't you go ahead and tell us some more about this movie, uh, Deathbed there, Mario, since you chose it. Uh, fucking suck. Um, Okay, so the... And my positive review, it had boobs. It did have boobs. Yeah, that's pretty much all. And it was like, what, the first ten minutes, there was boob? Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's boob like there, there's boob yeah. then. There's boob a little bit further on when when the, the second chick got killed. Yeah. Um. There was the... this, is, this is how this is how this is how bad this movie is. There's there's quite a bit of boob at the end, but it's so weird and like disgusting. You get or, or out there that you're you're not really into it. Well, there, there's the old lady reading the lesbian magazine. Yeah. That was funny. And then she just died. I'm like, what? What happened? It's not even a magazine. It's a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which I don't like know. That if was the headline. Hey, it was Lesbian Quarterly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the uh, the movie itself is a bed is possessed by a demon, mm-hmm. with a demon spirit. I'm sorry, please, please don't, for, please forgive me. Um, and then it eats people, eats things. I'm not even gonna say people. It eats things, because it ate I'm- a goddamn bucket of chicken i don't i don't want to say that it's eating them i, I want to say it's digesting them because it's, it's only doing one part of it it doesn't chew anything it doesn't seem to well actually it does poop because the the bones were found outside but yeah. remember when we talked about a bucket of chicken and then and jamal's response was why is it always a bucket of chicken oh fucking christ you're right jamal i'll give you that you you're you're right yeah. you guys remember uh, major league two yeah yep. okay <laughs> There you go. <laughs> but it's always a bucket of chicken. You can't be angry saying the words bucket of chicken. I know. It's just – that's why it's always a bucket of chicken because then it's you get fun. to say a yeah. bucket of chicken. <laughs> well – Fun phrase to say. You, it, it does help with the anger, and then when you actually get a bucket full of chicken, it's even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why the people in the KFC commercials are always smiling because you got a bucket full of chicken. It's true. I've never heard someone say, Mom, you got a bucket of chicken? Fuck you, Mom. No. <laughs> You've never Mom, heard anybody bucket... say say that downtrodden. Oh, man, it's a bucket exactly. of chicken. No, it's, it's a bucket of chicken. Yeah, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit, son, you got a bucket of chicken? Hell yes. Someday I want to go over to uh, to Home Depot and get one of those giant, like, five-gallon buckets and then take it over to the KFC and demand that they fill it up with chicken <laughs> for me. Uh Nice. Grown ass man. I, I won't even care how much that costs. <laughs> That'll be like 80, 90 bucks worth of chicken, and I'll be I'll sit there at the table for here in a Diet Coke. Like a legit bucket of chicken is on his bucket list. Exactly. Oh, My bucket of so, chicken list. So apparently you can go into um Baskin Robbins and ask for all thirty one flavors. Can you? You know, to sample. You're just a dick if you do it. <laughs> But for my for my buddy's 18th or yeah for my buddy's 18th birthday we decided we're gonna be those assholes, so we did that. We go into a, a Baskin Robbins and we ask, we want to try them all. And the lady looks at us. She's like, "What?" I'm like, "We want to try all 31 flavors before we decide what we're gonna ha- before we decide what we're gonna try." So the first couple of scoops, are, you know, they're pretty decent size, and then after that, it's literally that itty bitty spoon only of ice cream and by about 12 she was pissed with us well yeah because she knows the outcome of this because there's probably people who do it all the time you get full of the ice cream and then you leave oh no we bought a a shitload after that i mean we each we each got like fucking uh, what are they like the the half gallons or whatever Uh because you know we felt like assholes we weren't going to eat it there but we felt like assholes so we got some all right. Well, so at least you got Wait, if, if, if you have 31 of those little uh, little spoonfuls, isn't that the same thing as just getting, like, a small cup of ice cream? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 But we didn't so know which just... one we wanted. No, I'm just saying, if you could do that, you just got yourself a free uh, free small cup of ice cream. Just to, oh, yeah, you know, exactly. That's flavors. what we did. Did, yeah. did you just end up getting the vanilla? No, no. I ended up getting uh, my favorite, mint chocolate chip. You know what? I I feel like a freak. I'm the only person in the world that actually enjoys a vanilla. 
I like vanilla too. I'm actually not a big fan yeah. of the mint chocolate chip. I don't like mint and chocolate together for some reason. I will um, take vanilla or cookies and cream any day. That's it. I like uh, uh, chocolate chip cookie dough. And my new favorite is, and I, and I don't normally like um, coconut, but it was coconut and pineapple. And it kind of tasted like a pina colada minus the rum. Oh, that's good. Yeah, but I, but I, I do enjoy vanilla. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Actually, I just, don't get me wrong, I love vanilla. I, I mean, growing up, that's all we've really had. Like, that's, <laughs> the, one thing, that's, the, that's the one thing that you can splurge on normal ice cream. But I just found one. Uh, it's Ben Ben and Jerry's, I think it's the company. Um, they do like those flavors and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mm-hmm. Stephen Colbert one. It, oh it yeah, that's right. He did come dick. up with a flavor. Yeah. It will blow your dick off. It's so good. Is it just vanilla? Uh, no. It's like vanilla with like like rum or something. Like. Yeah, I, I like. I honestly don't remember what it is anymore, but it was so good. I recommend it, for everybody who's the thirteen people that are listening. <laughs> I would recommend it highly. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Okay. There's a new Colonel Sanders. You you just learned about the new Colonel Sanders? Yeah. There's a new new Colonel Sanders. The old, the the other guy, the SNL guy, got fired. He just, three months into it, Norm Macdonald is replacing him. Oh my God, that is going to be the best Colonel Sanders ever. Wait, Norm Macdonald's the only one that I knew about. No, there, no. there's no the other guy, the one that just started up again uh, or just started up this year was Daryl Hammond yeah. from SNL, and now Norm Macdonald's taking over. Huh. That that's probably not going to last long because Norm Macdonald got fired for from SNL, and I don't, I have no idea how one would get fired from SNL because yeah, no, basically what happened what happened with Norm Macdonald is there was a contract disagreement. They didn't think he was funny. Simplest way of putting it. Oh, he's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, was it Lauren Michaels and everybody like all the producers and everybody just thought he wasn't funny, so he disagreed very fervently and when he did that they basically said fuck you we're ripping up your contract right now you're never allowed to come back to snl and this was his second or third year i forget what it is doing the weekend update and they basically just fuck off you're no longer a part of us and so he left and then uh, if there's actually a really good uh, interview on Conan? I think it was Conan about it. And yeah, he he ripped SNL a new one. Like, it, it wasn't even funny, the kind of shit that he was bringing up. Well, you, you remember, um, uh, what was it, the uh, Celebrity Jeopardy? Yeah. That, that was made for Norm MacDonald. They did that whole thing so he could do his Burt Reynolds impersonation. Yeah, and and the yeah, whole Burt thing, Reynolds. yeah, and his Burt Reynolds is pretty good, but it, it was supposed to be Burt Reynolds was supposed to be what Sean Connery eventually became, which I believe Sean Connery was done by Daryl Hammond, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, Daryl Hammond Hammond actually kind of took over for Norm Macdonald in that instance. And so. now it's it's a it's, it's the exact opposite. Thing yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hold up a second. I got a call. Hello? Hey, babe, what's up? So the new commercial basically denounces the other guy as Colonel Sanders. Yes, it does. That's funny. Yeah, it's a little sad. Well, I, I didn't like his voice. It sounded so creepy. I, I don't like Norm Macdonald's voice because it sounds like it's emotionlessly coming from a machine. Yeah, his voice isn't right for Colonel Sanders. It's, it's a little better. I just Daryl Hammond just his voice just sounded so weird. Like the the best one I ever heard, and it was in a joke commercial. And I'm sorry, it was a joke commercial because I'd love to see him as Colonel Sanders. Was uh, uh, what's his face from the Roseanne show? Um, 
Uh, John Goodman? John Goodman, thank you. Yeah, John Goodman had, has, like, the best Colonel Sanders voice. Yeah. And he, he's an adopted Louisiana, and so he has the, the accent down as it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mario had to go. He had to go uh, take care of his girlfriend, so... Take care, giggity. Uh, no, but good try. Giggity. The Born Betrayal with Matt Damon. Really? They're doing another shaky cam film? In July. They're getting Paul Greengrass back to direct it, so I think it might turn out well. All right, well, we should probably wrap this up. Okay. Since uh, since Mario had to go and and take care of something, I'm sure. Yeah, there's something salvageable in here for you to use. I'm sure. Uh, we pretty much did the the end of it anyway. Just uh, you know, on behalf of Mario and whatnot. Um, what? There was something else. Eh, I forget. Oh well. Um, so rubber for next week. Okay. I know. I know you're looking forward to that one. So looking forward to it. Head on over to uh, mof.ninja for uh, show show notes and uh, discussions. Discuss with your friends on our open forum about, you know, something other than t-shirts and jerseys and, uh, and Viagra. Hey, we might all need that one day. Yes, yes, we might all need Viagra one day, but please stop putting it on MOF's uh, uh, show notes. <laughs> or or do, just, you know, pay us. If you want advertising space, you know, it, it doesn't come free. All right, well then, uh, it was good talking to you again, my friend. Good talking to you too. And I uh, will talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Join the makers each week as they discuss film, TV, and pop culture. To learn more about them, go to mof.ninja. This is Jason Statham saying goodbye.